Hello everyone, welcome to ComScience. In today's video, we'll look into CSS flex boxes. When we talk about CSS flex boxes, it's important to understand the concept of containers and items. The container can be any HTML block element that can contain any other elements and an item can be any HTML element which can be placed inside that container. Now, how do you make a normal HTML block element into a flex container? Simple, in the CSS for that element, you set its display property to flex as shown in the code snippet on the screen. You might have noticed that when we set up a container, we converted an unordered list element into a flex container by setting its display property to flex. That is because for the purpose of this video, we will be assuming that the HTML unordered list will be our container and the list items inside the unordered list will act as our CSS flex items. Also, we will assume the flex direction property to be set to row. With all those things in mind, let's dive into it. Another important concept that we need to be familiar with is the flex direction. That is, the direction in which the flex items will be laid out inside the container. There are two values that this property can take, row and column. When we set the flex direction as row, the items will be laid in a row order. A point to note here is that when the flex direction is row, the horizontal direction becomes the main axis, whereas the vertical direction becomes the cross axis. If we set the direction as column, the items get laid in the form of a column. Also, the main axis and the cross axis get exchanged. Now what is the significance of the main axis and the cross axis? We'll get there in a moment. Let us try to understand the flex wrap property. The flex wrap takes care of how multiple items are rendered inside a container when the number of items increases. The default value for flex wrap is no wrap. As you can see, when the flex wrap value is set to no wrap, the flex items do not wrap. They reduce in their dimension in order to fit inside a single row, but they do not render onto the next row. On the other hand, when the flex wrap property is set to wrap, notice how the items inside the container wrap around onto the next row. That is all you need to know about the flex wrap property. Coming to the flex flow property. The flex flow property is just a shorthand notation to specify the flex direction and the flex wrap properties. When the flex flow property is set to wrap row, it means flex wrap is set to wrap and flex direction is set to row. When the flex wrap property is set to no wrap row, it means flex wrap is set to be no wrap, flex direction is set to row. When the flex flow is set to wrap column, well, you get the point. Justify content is an important flex property. It determines how the flex items are laid along the main axis. Let us remind ourselves that for the purpose of this video, the flex direction is row and thus the main axis is horizontal. The default value for justify content is flex start, in which case the items are laid towards the start of the flex container. When we change that to flex end, the item move towards the end of the container. Justify content center makes all the items group together at the center of the main axis of the container. When we set the property to have a value of space between, the flex items distribute themselves so that there's an even space in between them. And finally, when the property is given the value of space around, the flex items distribute themselves so that they have an even amount of space around each of them. That is all we need to know about the justify content flex property. Next up is align items, another important flex property. The default is stretch, which means the items stretch to occupy the entire size of the cross axis for the container. In many ways, align items is similar to justify content. Just that it takes care about the way in which items are rendered along the cross axis 
the vertical direction in our case. When we modify the default value of align items and set it to flex start, all the items align towards the start of the cross axis of the container. Similarly, setting the value to flex end forces these items to align towards the end of the cross axis of the container. When we set the value to center, the center of each flex item aligns with the center of the cross axis of the container. There is one more value that the align items property takes, which is baseline. This value renders the flex items similar to flex start, but the only difference is the items are aligned by their baselines to each other instead of their starting pixels. Having looked into the flex properties for the container, let us now look into the ones that are applied for the flex item. Flex grow and flex shrink are the two important ones. Notice how we apply the style to the list items and not to the unordered list like we did previously. By default, the flex grow value is set to 0. Consider this as a boolean flag, which does not allow the flex item to grow inside of the container. When we toggle that value to 1, notice how the flex item grows to occupy the full size of the container, except for the padding of course. Similar is the flex shrink property. One main difference is that it is set to 1 and is enabled by default. Thus, in case the container shrinks in size, the item changes its own size accordingly. If you flip this value to 0, it would mean that even if the container now shrunk in its size, the flex item would not, which may lead to weird results sometimes. If we have a requirement wherein we need to align particular flex items without disturbing the others, we can use the flex align self property. When we set its value to auto, the element just inherits the value for its align items property set on the container. Notice how we are applying this property to only the first of the type item. When we change this value to flex start, we see no difference because this is the value set by align items on the container as well. Only when we change this value to stretch, we can see that only the first item stretches along the cross axis. If we change the align self value to flex end, the first item drifts to the end of the cross axis of the flex container. And if we set the value to center, only the first element adjusts itself so that its center is aligned with the center of the cross axis of the container. That's about it folks. In this video, we covered some basics which will help you get started with the CSS flex boxes. For more in-depth information, visit the link to the article provided in the video description. For more such videos, please subscribe to ComScience. Also, let us know in the comment section which other topics would you like to see getting covered from us. Thank you for watching the video. Until next time.